So what's kind of new to our program is we've been focused on the, uh, the estuary for a long time, since 1989. And we're now we're starting to attract you know, these, reef, these reef fish um, out into the uh, Gulf of Mexico, as you know, as I mean, as they occur there as well. So that presents some logistical challenges. You know, we're used to running around in mall skiffs inside the bay. You know, and now you know, we're having to, you know, get a hold of and fire ways to get out there and involve on some larger research vessels. Um, you know, so it's a completely different, you know, sampling design. Oops. And of course, the, you know, life histories are, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to track, you know, all, all the different life stages of an estuary into near shore habitat. So that's, you know, a different suite of years to do that. And the habitat changes, you know, incredibly uh, as, as you span uh, that distance. So this requires a multi-year habitat-based strategy, you know, to, to target the fish that we're after. So we've been working on this since uh, 2008, primarily out of our CP lab, um, you know, included areas off of Charlotte Harbor. Primarily applying gears that like NOAA has developed um, up in the uh, Panhandle and elsewhere, uh, trying to you know expand that into the uh, West Florida Shelf, you know, places like the Middle Grounds, um, and uh, apply those gears here. So we've been working on how to do it, you know, for a while. And uh, then the, uh, you know, with the oil spill, you know, there's definitely a, a need identified there. You know, that there needs to be more monitoring programs involved. You know, they're trying to assess damages and you know, finding out why wow, but no one's really keeping an eye on the Gulf. So now we have some, uh, you know, more stable funding, you know, now in place, like you know, 17 million dollars over five years to uh, expand our program uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. And so now it's time, you know, to implement. Uh, now the time. We're going to be doing this uh, starting this summer. So here's just sort of the title and some of the uh, benefactors. So the first thing, the first step is the uh, monitoring reef fish is to you know, set the gear on reef habitat. So you know, apparently most of the Gulf of Mexico is sand bottom, and uh, you've got to find the, you know small amount of problems to reef. So to do that, we use um, uh, doing a lot of site scans, sonar, you know, the golf has never been mapped, you know, very well. So we're out there kind of for the first time, um, <clears throat> you know, before we send ships out to set gear, we, have, we need places for them to go. So but this, this is kind of what some of the site scan sonar looks like. Uh, we see that ledge habitat off to the left. That's a relatively feature, you know, real desirable for fishermen to find, you know, a ledge that would be ideal. That's, kind of, that's what it looks like in the side scan sonar and uh, what it looks like you know, on camera below. And so there are some of the other. Out there to the right, we even have this like model habitat. The people have found if they cage a red river, you know, over sand bottom, they'll actually create habitat. They'll, they'll make a huge model, you know, for themselves to land. So even these features, you know, we can pick them up on the uh, side scan sonar. So now we've got a place to go. And so, you know, one of the gears that, that we set there, one of the main ones are, um, you know, the visibility is going to be pretty good, so uh, we use, like, stereoscopic uh, camera systems. So we lower them down, and we can see, you know, in different directions all around. You know, it's kind of like, almost like putting a diver down, and, you know, you can look around and catch fish. That's basically what we're doing, you know, with these camera systems. And then we have um, uh, traps and video. So, I mean, GoPros are being used on everything now. You know, I was at a water park and everyone had them on their chest and on the water slide. So, uh, we're doing the same thing, we're putting these GoPros on you know, anything that goes on the water, you know, pretty much. And uh, so, there's one on the, on the uh, fish trap and kind of you know, what it looks like on uh, the uh, video. So, that requires a lot of, um, you know, we go out on these cruises and we come back with just, you know, terabytes of data, you know, from. Uh, some of this video and camera work. So there's, you know, most of our fish ID guys now are staring at, um, you know, screens and watching video, you know, for hours and hours at a time. And uh, so here's, you know, just to round it out, you know, we have some uh, hook gears. Um, we're able to see a lot of fish and count them, and we get some of them in the traps. Uh, we still rely pretty heavily on hook gears, like, 
and if you can just hook on positioning to target species like red snapper and uh, uh, things like that. And so this also allows us to expand the collection of our life history data. So we still need those hard parts like otoliths to age the fish. You know, the reproductive tract for figuring out when these critters spawn, you know, and, and you know, how many eggs we're putting out, and things like that. So here we are, uh, you know, coming back to our monitoring strategy. Remember, we were trying to track all the different life stages uh, from the estuary out to the law. So I covered these um, the estuarine sea grass, that was the hall sands and draws, and then I uh, talked about the, the reef habitat, that was the video and the camera work. You know, but what about, uh, what about these, this uh, egg field plankton, and this, just sort of all this soft bottom habitat that's out there in the Gulf? Basically what we're doing to tackle that is uh, expand the uh, CMAP survey. This is something that's been around for quite a while. It's basically just uh, doing these water straws. Um, and it was developed up in the uh, Gulf states to for primarily to track egg shrimp and brown shrimp populations. And we've been in, it's been expanding. Um, we're working on all species uh, out there in the near shore. So that'll help us track, you know, those reef fish that, you know, they're not as green and we're not able to track them with our nets in the bay. And, uh, you know, we're not seeing them in, in the hard bottom. You know, they're just out there in the open. And there's a few that, that do that, you know, red snapper, and vermilion snapper, are examples of, you know, reef fish that just use that sort of open, expansive habitat. So that, you know, helps us get a handle on those guys. And then we're including uh, aphioplankton in the surveys now on, on these uh, CMAP cruises. And we'll be doing them all down the west Florida shelf, uh, you know, as you see there in that picture of all that gray. But everything from the handheld down you know, to the right to the is, um, you know, these, uh, these CMAP uh, cruises. So that's kind of, that's what the, the program looks like. So this is a, you know, a new adventure for us, uh, leaving our ball skiffs and, uh, you know, venturing offshore. And, um, so that's, uh, that's what the, uh, the future of our uh, monitoring program uh, is going to look like. Thanks. data 
asking you know, the fishermen what they catch and tracking the, uh, you know, those commercial industries. So that's how they've done the stock assessments in the past. And so there's a need for the fishery independent data, especially as we're doing some of the, we're closing large areas nowadays, like over on the East Coast. Um, you have to close red snapper fishery entirely <coughs> in uh, certain areas. And so then all of a sudden they're not getting any data from the fishermen and they don't know what's going on. So they, that's where you really need someone going in with the fishery independent uh, angle and at least still getting data and what's the size structure like. Uh, that's been a big issue on the East Coast. Is the red snapper, but they're like too small. You know, they're, they're five years old and there should be some out there that are 20, 25 years old. You know, so where are those real big ones? So somebody's got to be out there aging the fish. And, um, so those are the kinds of things you know, that, that we need to be doing. Um, and I'll be more of those types of closures, MPAs type of things in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Didn't work out here. You don't have to work for it. <laughs> it, it seems like, it, and I arrived a little late, sorry about that, but it seems like the, there's this uh, tremendous amount of unknown information, and you talk about the Gulf hasn't been back. It's, you know, I find that amazing. And, uh, you know, it seems like with the things you found with Tarpon and, and these guys, do you feel like there's this potential for some really exciting and interesting discoveries to come about? With this kind of expansion, it seems like it would be. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I mean, I, when I was in a, you know graduate school, it seemed like everything in the world had been done, and every time you had an idea, idea that's been done, and then you get out into the real world and realize nothing's been done. <laughs> there's so much still to do. But yeah, there's all kinds of discoveries. I mean, we're just scratching the surface on a lot of these you know, uh, different species out there, what they do or where they go. You know, new technologies come on, like the acoustic tracking. You know, it's been around for about 10 years now, but that's relatively new in the, you know, the 100, 200-year history of fisheries. And uh, so now we actually get to watch fish and where they go precisely, you know, and, uh, you know, things like that. So as new technologies come on, you know, we're able to uh, just totally blow, you know, old paradigms, you know, away and do things differently. I have one more question. I, I read somewhere that the... Uh, People didn't know what the different life stages of things were, and they were pulled into this, I guess it's called lithium And they wouldn't know that that was the juvenile stage of something or other. Is that true? Is that you pull things in and think you know what they are, but not really true? Yeah, I mean, the hippie of London is a, it's a really tough field. I mean, it's interesting, it's a you know, whole field in itself, but we ship most our samples off to Poland, believe it or not. When they, for, for some reason, they had incredible expertise on that in the And um, so it takes um, a lot of effort to do that. They're not as easy to see. You know, the differences yeah. are subtle. And, uh, and, you know, with genetics and things now, we're able to get better at all the things are. So, so, yeah, we have Yeah. Oh, I want to know how big the boat is. Yeah, I mean, we use boats that are... Um, you know, it, it can be 100, 120 foot long, some of the big uh, things like the Weatherbird, um, but the which is stationed out of St. Pete. And the program has just acquired, like, I mean, I think it's like a 50 foot ish boat, um, you know, made for offshore work. It's like a, uh, <clears throat> like a North Carolina um, pothole or time. Because yeah. basically, we're, we're basically doing a lot of pothole out there when we're setting the tra traps and cameras down. And so it's kind of a more of a Chesapeake Bay style uh, boat that we've only had it for, like, this is its first year, so we've been doing a lot of our trips off of it. There's more, Phil, don't leave yet. One more. <laughs> Have you been finding the lionfish throughout the Gulf? Um, yeah, that's one thing in that, that CMAP survey. Like, we've been doing that for, uh, well, I said since 2008, um, going out on those surveys in the spring. And we hadn't uh, been catching lionfish until last year. And then we were catching them everywhere, just all over the place. So when we first heard about lionfish through, you know, divers and things that were on the, in the best habitat, like artificial reefs, and that's kind of where the first reports came from. And then so now to see it in the sea map trawling, which is kind of that's your soft bottom, like you know, occasionally we'll run over a rock type of thing. And now we're seeing lionfish everywhere. You know, so they've moved out of their the, the 
time, habitats, you know, just to be in all of the place in the golf.